Hi, this is Katherine Schneider from the Fitchburg Historical Society. And uh, the Fitchburg Historical Society has been um, uh, collecting stories uh, from Fitchburg uh, residents about how things are going during this, this historic time we're living in with COVID, um, how it's impacted, uh, how government is being conducted, um, education, uh, business, all those things have been impacted. And so um, this afternoon, we are so happy to welcome Sonia Short. Uh, Sonia is the uh, Chief Elections Inspector for uh, District 3 in the city of Fitchburg. And uh, of course, 2020 has been quite the year for, uh, for elections in Fitchburg and all the challenges that it's presented. So uh, we have uh, Sonia here to, um, to inform us on how the elections were conducted and, and how the pandemic uh, impacted all of that this year uh, for, uh, for Fitchburg particularly. So Sonia, thank you, welcome. Um, I'd like to ask, first of all, um, could you tell us how you got involved helping with elections in Fitchburg and then what your role was in the elections this year? Okay. Um, the short answer is I was invited. Um, Muriel Stoneman, a longtime Fitchburg resident, was an elections inspector. And at one point she just invited me. She said, you know, why don't you come and volunteer? So in about um, 2005, I think it was, um, I did. And uh, over the years worked at several of the different districts, um, mostly doing registration. Um, I was very comfortable with a computer and a, and a lot of our elections inspectors were not. And so uh, registration was something that had to be done on a computer. And so that's what I did. Um, and then in, 20, at the end of 2015, when I retired, I took the training and, because they were short on uh, chiefs for the, for the districts. And I took the training. And so in 2016, I became the chief elections inspector for District 3. And that's where I've been ever since. That's where I've been serving. All right, great. Thanks, Sonia. And of course, COVID-19 was a significant factor in how the elections were conducted um, all year in the spring, uh, uh, April 7th presidential preference. And then August 11th, we had the partisan primary. Uh, November 3rd, of course, the general election. Uh, would you describe the way Fitchburg prepared for and conducted each of these elections in light of the challenges that were presented by COVID-19? Oh, certainly, certainly. Of course, April, the April election was the first one that COVID really was, was around. Um, and so at that point, as you know, most of the elections helpers are seniors and seniors are a, a, a fairly um, at risk group. And many of our seniors decided that they weren't going to help. So we were really, really shorthanded for the April election. But happily, uh, Governor Evers um, gave, gave us the use of our National Guard. And they were just tremendous. Each of us, each of the districts had probably anywhere from six to eight guards people there to help. And they helped all day, actually the day before, and throughout the day doing various tasks. They were really, really fun to work with. Then for the other elections, many more people decided that, it, that they would take the risk. And younger people, I had, I had one volunteer who said, yeah, my grandma told me that I needed to come and do this. <laughs> so we had, we had a considerably different group of folks, but plenty of folks to come in to, to help us with the other elections. But for each of the elections, um, we instituted uh, a lot of precautions, shall I say, a lot of safety um, steps. Uh, we, everybody wore masks. Um, we practiced the social distancing, actually putting X's tape on the floor to, to make sure that they were spread six feet apart. Um, we got sneeze 
uh, screens, you know, the plexi screens for each of the um, folks who were working at check-in, at registration, at the ballot tables. Um, then we also had workers who were, the, the only thing they were assigned to do was to actually clean and so they had the spray bottles of sanitizer and would clean, clean the voting booths, clean the pens that people used, clean all of the surfaces throughout. And uh, people were, the voters were encouraged to actually bring their own pens and so that they didn't even have to use ours. So there were a lot of things that um, over time and each, each election we got better at it, we did more, um, but but a lot of, lot of those precautions that today are pretty commonplace, but you know, back in April, that wasn't the case. So uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's how we prepared anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. It sounds like a lot of new people were involved in the elections than had ever been, had, had an opportunity to do that before. Oh, very definitely, very definitely. Um, we had, in fact, um, for the November election, um, in the, my morning crew, I had six people who had never worked before. In my afternoon crew, I had nine people who had never worked before. So yeah, lots, lots of new folks. Wonderful. Uh, the pandemic has done, has done things that we never would have anticipated, I think, in terms of bringing out new election, election workers to experience what that's like. Um, well, there was, of course, concern for the voter safety generated um, a significant increase in requests for absentee ballots, um, particularly for the November 3rd presidential general election and general election. Um, how was this handled in Fitchburg? And then how were you involved, Sonia? Okay. Um, yeah, it really did. Um, early on, people were requesting absentee ballots. And as you know, there are there are rules about everything, and definitely there are rules, you know, laws about how we handle the the absentee ballots. And there's a certain window of time that the clerks have to actually get the ballots out and mailed. Um, they have to get them out in time for the overseas voters, those uh, folks in the military, um, who, who of course still want to vote here, you know, for their for their elections. Um, and this year, it was especially, it was especially a short window, a very, um, just a few days that we had to get the ballots out because the Supreme Court had to weigh in on who exactly was going to be on the ballot. You know, there was some controversy there. And so in fact, uh, it, it, would, it would have been impossible for the city employees to get these out on their own. So they enlisted the help of all of us chiefs. So um, we came in, um, when, when the ballots come in, um, they are checked in to the WIS vote system and it's the WIS vote system that can generate all of the labels for the ballots going out. And so we were putting labels on both the mailing envelope as well as the return envelope. You are preparing the ballots. They all have to be stamped with absentee. They all have to be stamped with the proper wards. We have to make sure that we get the right ones to the right people. Just in my district alone, we have four different ballots for November and it's all based on which ward they're in district and uh, which school district they are a part of. Yeah, so, so we have a lot of ballots and there's a lot to, to put together. So we folded everything, um, inserted it with, with the instructions and then got all of those envelopes out so that uh, Tracy, our, our city clerk could get them out on time when she needed to. So um, yeah, it was a lot of work uh, to get those out. Like, sounds like a major task within a short period of time to get done. You yeah. were certainly under, under time constraints there. Um, could you also talk about how the early voting and person absentee voting um, from uh, October 20th through the 30th went at the Fitchburg Community Center? Um, and I know curbside voting was also available. So how was that conducted? And then how did that work out? Okay. Um, 
there's early voting is always an option for people. And, and early voting, I think a lot, in fact, I know a lot of people that came in didn't realize that early voting is really in-person absentee voting. It's still absentee voting. Nothing can be counted until election day. Nothing can be opened. You know, it's, it's everything has to wait until election day. So um, <clears throat> usually the clerks take care of all of the in-person voting, the early voting right there in the office, you know, right there, um, kind of in the hallway. But for this presidential election, we knew that it was going to be big. And we also, of course, had to think about social distancing and COVID um, safety. So we set up in Oak Hall in the, in the big community center um, gymnasium, I guess you'd call it, so that there was enough room. Um, and again, it was not only the chiefs this time, but also several of the other election inspectors that were serving throughout those, those days. Tremendously successful. Um, the first day alone, we had over 500 people that came in. We had a line when we, when we arrived you know, to, to do our jobs. Um, there was a line way out into the parking lot. Um, and we averaged, I think, about 200 um, people a day that came in and, and, and did that. Um, <clears throat> curbside voting, curbside voting has, has always been uh, an option for people too, but generally it's considered for those people who are physically unable to come into the um, voting, the polling location. And um, this time though, we were, we were using it and encouraging people, anyone who had active COVID to use that option instead of coming in and exposing all kinds of people to it. So we were also um, by the um, November election had, had smartened up about it and had people call us ahead of time. So we knew what time they were coming so that we could prepare. Um, and not only wearing masks, but then putting on a face guard, um, preparing the materials to take out to the people. Um, the people would show us their ID through the car window so we could take down the information. We'd write that on a, a log sheet. And instead of, usually you take their ID and you go into the, into the polling location and that's how you get the ballot and all of that. Um, but this time we write down the information that we needed so that we didn't have to touch their, their IDs. Um, went in, got the ballot, got the envelope, um, brought it back out to them, put it on a clipboard. They used their own pens, and kind of slide it, slid it through a, a car, car window very carefully. They filled it all out. We watched them do it. Um, we had them folded, fold up the ballot, put it into the envelope had them sign it and then put it back on the clipboard. They gave us the clipboard. And by the way, we also wore gloves so that we didn't, you know, we weren't actually touching it. And then took all of that back in and sprayed the heck out of it. We sprayed even the, even the paper and we'd let that paper sit until it, until it dried. Um, and then we could sign it as witnesses and, and put it in with the rest of the ballots, but we didn't want to contaminate you know, the rest of the ballots um, with, the, with the ones that were there. We weren't quite that sophisticated back in April. Um, and in fact, I um, kind of got freaked out a little bit when one of my curbside voters with her window down, no mask on said, oh yeah, I'm positive. I was like, oh goodness, yeah, I, mm -hmm. But um, happily, <laughs> I didn't didn't get it, so um, all turned out turned out well. Mm. Amazing, amazing how you were able to adapt to to let all the voters who came, even with COVID, were able to vote. Uh, yeah. That's quite a remarkable story. <laughs> yeah. um, well, let's move on to election day itself on November third. Um, would you go through election day with us and then describe where you were located specifically, how the day went, um, what the atmosphere was like, and maybe what stood out to you about election day? Okay. 
All right. Well, election day for the inspectors starts early. We, um, we start at six o'clock. Um, so at six o'clock, I was over at the Wyndham Garden Inn, which is where, over on Cahill, Maine, which is where District 3 is. And when I arrived, there were already voters in line. This is six o'clock in the morning. Polls don't open until seven. <laughs> but it's anyway. dark. It's yeah, dark. It was dark. Absolutely, it was dark. Um, so my job at that point, um, well, and I should, and I need to say, um, we try to have two election, chief election inspectors at each polling location. So it isn't just me, you know, I've got another, another person um, helping me. Um, but what we do between six and 6.30 is, you know, get the lights on, um, turn on all of the equipment, turn on the machines, the tabulators, uh, run the there's a report that we have to run off of each of the tabulators that proves that there's no, no ballots inside. There's no, nothing's been counted yet. So we've got to get those, those reports run. Um, we use the Badger book um, system developed by the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Uh, we use, it's, a, it's like a, a notebook computer and software. And we use that for absentee processing absentee ballots for checking voters in and for uh, registration. So all of that has to be um, <clears throat> started up and gotten ready um, to for all of the workers. The workers come in at 630. And as I said, we um, I had six people who had never worked before. I had a few people who had never used the Badger books before. So we were scrambling trying to you know, get everybody situated into their particular um, position and get them to understand what, what they needed to do. Um, also um, had to get the ballots ready. Um, the ballots are locked up uh, in the tabulators until we arrive. So had to unlock and get all the ballots out, get those over to the ballot table, get the people there started with each of the ballots have to have two initials on them. And we got to make sure that they are stamped with the proper that we got the right ones, that they're stamped with the right wards and all of that. So got those people started with that. And then um, promptly at um, seven o'clock, open the polls. And by that time, we had people lined up and way across the parking lot. And we just went constantly for at least, I would say until at least 9.30, 10 o'clock, something like that, before we could even just even take a breath. I mean, it was just a constant, everybody was there. You know, they wanted, they were very um, serious about wanting to vote, you know, and very determined to take whatever time it was gonna take. Um, and so, yeah, it was a steady stream. Throughout the day, yeah, um, constant, constant folks. <clears throat> um, we didn't really know what to expect on voting day. You know, there'd been all kinds of potential for disruption and intimidation and that kind of thing. Um, basically, I had the police department on speed dial in case we needed them. You know, as a chief and elections inspector, it's my job to tell people to leave if they are causing a disruption. So, um, you know, we were, we were prepared when, if, if we were gonna have that. But happily, as it turned out, it was just the opposite. Um, at one point, somebody come, came in and they said, did you know, Sonia, that, that there's a vendor out there? There's a food cart out in the, in the parking lot and there's live music. <laughs> and, and there was, and throughout, I don't know from I, whether it was noon or what time, I'm not sure, I don't recall what time, but throughout the afternoon, it was like a party out there. It was, it was wonderful. And yes, I had people, if you picture the, the location, I had people across the parking lot, down the hill, down Cahill, Maine, and down all the way to Fish Hatchery Road that were in line waiting. And it, and it was primarily because they were all being really good about six feet apart, you know, staying, staying socially distant. Um, and even with that, 
uh, I've got to say, <clears throat> we, we processed them fairly quickly. Um, I asked a few people, well, you know, how long have you been in line? And, and they would say, well, I was expecting, you know, maybe a couple hours, but it's only been like 20 minutes, you know, so 20 minutes, a half hour. So I, I felt really good about the fact that we were able to get those folks going and going through. Um, people were very respectful of us, which was nice. I mean, I, I had to turn some people away. Um, to be able to vote and, and uh, you, you got to be registered. And I had about 300 people that came in that needed to register during the day. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of people. Um, and to register, you have to be in living in the city of Fitchburg at your current address, at your current address for at least 28 days. And I had a few people that were 20 days you know, two weeks, whatever. They just didn't meet the meet the requirement. And <clears throat> some of them were Fitchburg residents. I mean, the, they had um, previously lived in Fitchburg too. But unfortunately, they hadn't registered at that previous address, and so I couldn't let them vote. I mean, if they if they had been registered at that previous address, I could have had them vote a presidential only um, ballot and that would have that would have worked um, but I couldn't you know so I had a few people that I it was a few I mean it wasn't wasn't many um, anybody who came in who needed to um, wanted to vote but didn't have an ID uh, didn't have the proper ID no you can't vote in Wisconsin with an Illinois driver's license. It just it can't do that. Um, <clears throat> those folks, we offered a provisional vote, the option to vote provisionally. Um, and then they have, so, so what, that, what that does is they fill out a ballot, we put it in a special envelope, seal it, um, and we'll take that to City Hall. And they have until the Friday, four o'clock on Friday afternoon after the election. And if they bring their photo ID, a, a valid photo ID or a, um, <clears throat> their passport, for example, um, then um, they, we, can, we can certify and, and, and validate that ballot and add that to the total. Um, but, but uh, you know, uh, and we had quite a few people who filled out provisional ballots citywide, um, but when it came right down to it um, on Monday when our Board of Canvas met, um, we only had two people, I think, that, that had come back with the IDs, but, but at least they have that option. So we work really hard to make sure that everybody can vote who is um, eligible and that their votes will be counted. Mm. So at eight o'clock then, promptly, shut the polls down. Anybody who's in line at that point can, or in the building, um, can continue to vote um, and, until it, till they're, they're all gone. Um, then I close the polls on the tabulators, run the reports um, there from the tabulators, um, then modem the results from there directly to Dane County. <clears throat> and that's where they get the early, early results from run reports, close the polls on the Badger book stuff, um, close down the express vote. Then we pull out all of the ballots out of the tabulators and all of those have to be sorted. And they're sorted because we had four different ballot types. All of those were sorted into four different piles. And then within those four different piles, um, <clears throat> we had absentee versus regular ballots, uh, any ballots that had to be remade and then we had to find and record all of the write-in ballots. So there were like 16 different piles, so to speak. And then all of those are put into a ballot bag and they're sealed, you know, labeled, and those are locked back into the tabulators and brought back to City Hall. So those ballots are never out of, out of control, you know, out of sight. You know, they're, they're always locked up and they're always secure. Hmm. Um, hmm. Most of my workers, you know, that all takes a long time. And then we got to pack everything up. 
take it, tear it down, put it away. Um, most of my workers were able to leave, I think about 9.30 or so. So it wasn't too bad. Um, the other chief and I were there. Um, I think we checked out at about 11 you know, because it took a lot to put things away. We had reports and numbers to crunch and such to do. So uh, it, was a, it was a long day, but you know, it was fun. We had a good time. It is, it is good time with all those folks. Oh, wonderful to hear you say that, Sonia, to have your, your personal story about that the, even though the long hours, the Certainly there must have been uh, stress along with that and maybe some tension wondering how the day would go and then getting people trained and up and going. But then at the end of the day to feel that sense of um, accomplishment and satisfaction, I would think, and know that you had, and to actually be able to use the word fun <laughs> also connected with how the day went. Um, well, and then uh, counting of the ballots. So I think, I think we heard pretty much about that. Um, and there were certainly a large volume uh, of absentee ballots due to COVID-19 also this year. Yeah. So all of those uh, need to be counted. So really a huge job, isn't it, to make sure yeah. that all of that does get done. Yeah, we had, we had about 3,000 absentee ballots that we had just in my district. Overall, I think it was like 19,000 um, for the city of Fitchburg. All of those are checked in through WISVOTE um, and then they're looked over again at on we on the Saturday before um, the election all of the chiefs get together this year we had some helpers from some of our other election inspectors too because there were so many um, and we do an audit and we make sure that everything that was in WISVOTE we have a physical ballot for you know, so so that's it's that we're checking over those envelopes again, making sure that everybody has signed them. You know, they've got the witness and the witness address and all of that information. And all along the way, we keep finding ones that you know we've missed, and and oops, here's one that without a signature. So you know, city staff jump in, they call the people, or or they email them and say, you know, if you can get in here. Or if you can go to the poll, you know, your ballot will be held there. And, you know, if you can get that information, you know, um, completed, then your ballot will be counted. But otherwise, it's going to have to be rejected. And I did, I did have one person who came in, um, I don't know, in the evening, actually, almost, almost towards the end of the night. And she came in, she showed me her ID, and it was, oh, this is my person that has that that has this ballot that was missing a signature so she could she could sign her ballot and we could we could put it in and 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 record it but yeah oh, there's there multiple checks along the way to make sure that that it's done well and then all of those ballot envelopes are counted at the end of the night and then that's balanced against the report that we run out from badger books to make sure that oh yeah okay we got the we got the right numbers so yeah a lot of work a lot of work, a lot of work. And then, and yet uh, also part of that work is um, following through with voters to just make sure if they, they come in, if there's something wrong, that they have that opportunity, almost like a, a second chance. So here's what's missing. If you come in by this, this time before the polls close, we will see that this gets certified for you. Yeah. Um, wonderful checks and balances that, that work in the system to hear about, Sonia. Yeah, there's, um, there's one, more, one more piece of that too. Um, uh, we always encourage people when they come in to vote to wait after they feed the ballot so that it, um, it says thank you and it, it actually accepts it. Um, but of course, with the absentee ballots, you don't, you don't have those people. And so when the, when the tabulator rejects it, we have the opportunity to take a look at that ballot then and see, can we tell what the voter really intended? And if we can, then we can remake the ballots. So um, for example, I, I, people don't follow directions. Um, it, says, <laughs> it says, use black ink, not red, not green, don't be creative. It says, fill in the little, little circle, not put a check mark, 
not put an X, <laughs> fill in the circle. You know, so those are the kinds of things that we have to do. It's like, okay, it's obvious here that this person was voting for this, um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh. those are the, and we had about 45 ballots that we had to remake. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we put a green sticker on the remade one and a red sticker on the bad one. The bad ones are, are put into an envelope um, that's sealed. And now at the recount, those were all taken out. They were compared, making sure that we did it properly, you know, mm -hmm. that, that we had signed them. There have to be two people working on this. Can't be just one. It's got to be two people. Made sure that we signed them all. You know, so, yeah. That's... All those checks and balances, they're just, they're just wonderful to hear about the details of how the accuracy is, yeah. is so um, insured with all the checks and balances that are there in the system. Yeah. Um, Sonia, um, do you have any, um, any other closing remarks about the election uh, during this year of COVID uh, that maybe we haven't discussed yet that you'd like to mention? Well, the, the one thing that I really want people to understand is what a terrific city clerk staff, clerk and staff we have. Tracy Oldenburg is just phenomenal, incredibly organized, um, just a delight to work with um, and her staff. Uh, I've been at City Hall a lot over the last you know, few weeks during the, during the election season. They are so patient, so patient. When people call, um, they are so gracious. And, and you know that they're working, I mean, they're working before, during, and after the election. They're putting in long, long days um, and they can still be so so good and so helpful. So I, I need to, to raise that up at um, what, a, what a gracious staff we have for the city of Fitchburg. They're, oh, they're wonderful. wonderful. Wonderful to hear that, and that's that. Fitchburg can feel so fortunate yeah. to have uh, to have that quality of people working for the city. Um, and then to turn uh, to turn maybe our attention to you personally, also Sonia, what motivates you to put in that extraordinarily long hours? You were describing election day, but all the other elections and getting ready for and and taking the great care you do in making sure that every eligible voter has the opportunity to cast their ballot and have their vote counted. What motivates you to do that? Oh, yeah. Um, a couple of things, actually. Um, I grew up in the 50s and 60s, and I remember quite vividly President Kennedy's inaugural admonishment, shall we say, Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Well, I, you know, I didn't volunteer to go off to the Vietnam War, um, but I've always looked for something that I can do for my community. Um, my dad was um, was a, a veteran. He he was in the army during World War II, and in fact, um, fourteen months of his life he was a prisoner of war. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, serving, uh, serving your community is really important to us. Um, having the ability, the freedom to vote uh, has, has been really important in my family. And I figure I'm not, I'm not one that's going to be out there um, protesting and marching and, and that kind of thing. But I can I can work at the polls. It's something I can do, and so I'm proud to be able to to serve my city of Fitchburg as an elections inspector. Oh, Sonia, thank you, thank you so much. And on behalf of the residents of the city of Fitchburg, just a huge gratitude to you for all you've done to make these elections with their special challenges this year in particular um, go so so smoothly and, um, and accurately and securely. Um, a huge debt of gratitude for you and staff you worked with and the city staff for making all of that possible. And I think 
just to say thank you to the citizens of Fitchburg for standing in those lines patiently yeah. and yeah. and uh, and showing up to do the duty that we all have as living in a democracy. Um, you have the story to tell of how that how that is done, uh, how those votes are taken and counted and secured. Um, I'd just like to mention also um, that uh, Sonia's interview will be uh, not only on uh, Talking Fitchburg, but on the Fitchburg Historical Society uh, website. So we'd encourage people to check that out, fitchburghistory.org. And uh, again, Sonia, thank you so much for your time and uh, all you've done for the city of Fitchburg in the elections this year. You're, You're so welcome. great. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.